Hello, hey, and welcome to Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica, and this is David, and we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. Are you clean? I think so. You fresh? No, but I'm clean. <laughs> you got all the lint off of you? Most of it. Okay. You're supposed to do that before. Missed it. And you got one. One on your shoulder. Where? Yeah. That's yeah. it. You got it. Camera can't even see it. I can see it. We're going to look at it. So. How's it going? It's going. Yeah? How's it going with you? Is it Christmas yet? I'm ready. I don't even want it, need it to be Christmas. I just, just... I think I just need it to be next week. Why? I just feel like... You ever been in a season where mentally you know you just need to get over this hump and everything will be fine, but it's like getting over the hump, you can't do it. But it's like you know on the other side, at least whenever I'm in like a troubled, tumultuous, turbulent. You're specifically looking for words with T that start with T? I'm on a roll, treacherous season. Mentally, I know it's like, it's like reading a book and you're on like the really slow part of the book and you're like, I just need to get through these, these couple pages and like the good stuff is going to happen. That's kind of how I feel. Like when you climb a really, when you're walking up a really steep hill and it's exhausting as you're doing it, but you know, <clears throat> you'll either get to the top or you'll get to a plateau and it'll balance out. So that's kind of where I am. And I feel like next week might be that pinnacle why next week because it's not this week no particular reason it's just not this week so so for, for context everybody we're recording this on monday so it's monday and you already know that you need it to be next week it's already. not a it's not a good sign also I, what happened to the whole i don't know yeah because you know. know where i was going i do i do and i was yeah. prepared to defend that stance okay i'm still as you notice i didn't say like I just got to make it through. I'm just, I just want to be in I mean, next you week. you did, you just didn't say it within no, those I words. I just want to be in next week. I just feel like That's next week. the same week, thing. No, it's not. It's my philosophy, so you can't like redefine it. Oh, I can't use general logic. Towards my philosophy? Towards your no. philosophy. Towards other people's philosophies? Yes. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's just where I am. Okay. I'll be okay. I just got to. Keep chugging along. And press on. I mean, I keep waking up, so I clearly have to keep, have to keep chugging along. Yeah, you can't. Afford, you can't not wake up either. Mm-mm. I need you. Can't leave me alone with these. Y'all would be just fine. Just fine. They would be fine. You. My locks would fall out. <laughs> you would be fine. Because all my I mean, locks would be bald. I'd be bald headed. Ask you a lot, Daddy. Daddy. Just putting Savi to sleep just now was epic. She was like, Solace, what's your other name? <laughs> she was like, Solace. He's like, what's Sonoma's other name? Sonoma. What's daddy's other name? David. And then Solace was like, I don't know everybody's name. Because she was going like to grandmas and uncles. Um, and Solace was like, I just want to go to sleep. I don't know everybody's name. And that's it. You would just have to deal with like the redundancy of being asked questions over and over again. You'd be fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't deal with it. I got Crocs. Oh, it's something on the bottom of my Crocs. A sticker, a price tag. Against my better judgment. No, it's not the price. It's not the price tag. Why Why are you against your better judgment? Because I, I hate adults in Crocs. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh. I just, but don't you have a pair? I only bought them because after Sonoma was born and the surgery, my feet had swollen. Mm. And I couldn't get into any shoes. So I needed an easy slip-on shoe for when I had to go out to the doctor's appointments. But I, have you, do you see me wear them? Like, I wear them around the house. I will not step I out. hate that they're 
a bit too small. Otherwise, I would wear them too because then I'd have a white pair and a black pair. But I'll just rock with these black I ones. I just think Crocs are adorable on little kids. Especially Savi's feet. Oh my gosh, Savi looks so adorable in her little clogs. But, like adults. And I think I'm traumatized because back when I was in high school and I worked at Harris Teeter, there was this guy, it was this interracial couple, husband was black, uh, wife was white. Um, and they'd come in and they'd grocery shop. Like big, like three, four hundred dollars. I think it was like every Tuesday or Wednesday. And he would be in like a suit, like someone who just got off work, professional work. And he'd have on like these obnoxious colored Crocs. And it just didn't make sense to me. Like it bothered me. And they always came to my line. They were super nice. But like to see someone like well-dressed and then in Crocs, it just, it, it deterred me from Crocs. So if you don't work in a kitchen or if you're not a nurse, I'm just kind of like, or you're not a small child. I'm just kind of like, why? Like I, I have, I think because of him, I have just very minimal respect for people who wear Crocs. Minimal respect. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, wow. I mean, say whatever you want to say to it's me. It's quite a. I'm just not a Croc fan. It's quite a line to draw. Yeah, I do have Croc sandals, mm-hmm. but they they don't they're not the clogs. They're just Croc branded, you know, thong sandals. But I don't know what it is about Crocs, especially in like adult males. It just does not. It doesn't. It does not work for me in public. You can wear them around the house, but like don't don't. Don't go to Harris Teeter mm. with me. Next place we go, I'm rocking them. I'm not going out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my regular shoes on no. when we get in the car, and I'm going to have my Crocs in the back. When we get there, I'm changing into my Crocs. I'm going to be like, hey, y'all, she's with me. Yeah, that's my wife, and she bought me my Crocs, and she thinks I look fabulous in them. I don't. Fabu. I did buy Savi a pair, too, and she was very excited. Sonoma tried to wear them. Sonoma tries to wear everything. Sonoma tries So what this isn't going to do is turn into a podcast about our kids. You don't talk about your Crocs. Because I lo- yeah, my Crocs. And here you come with Savi and because Sonoma and stuff. I bought her some Crocs. And then I felt bad that I didn't get Sonoma some. I felt bad that hers are way flyer than mine. They are. They yeah. got like stars or something. Like, why don't why aren't mine? Because I didn't want to. I didn't know what fly. your Croc personality was. No, I black is black, black on black Crocs were safe. Black is cool. Yes. Because the don't white ones, I don't wear them because... I don't wear them out, but they're oh, also I'm, very obnoxious. And I'm black full with my black Crocs. You know, is this is the first. This is what I wore the first episode this this season when we came back. No, I did not know that. Yeah. Is this like the last episode? Is no, this uh, an it, episode I of significance. It doesn't need to be, but okay. it might be. I don't know. It could be time to set up. It could be time to close up shop. I mean, it might be it. it. Could be the end of a vibe. The end of. 2025 you know what's crazy is this time last year no when was our last episode was it after thanksgiving october it was october yeah we well, just had the baby i had just had the baby so our last episode was before thanksgiving it was before she was born october oh yeah that's right okay For some reason i thought we did one we did one after Mm-mm. that's right yeah, I don't even know what number we're on this season. Cool. What's up? What, what do you mean, what's up? What's up, like, mm-hmm. what's up with me, or what's up, like, what are we talking about? Or I mean, if you want to talk about yourself, what's going on with you? Nothing. Cool. I'm ready for Christmas. Why? Even though I don't have any time off. Why are you <clears throat> ready for Christmas? I just am. Like, what are you anticipating getting from Christmas that has you ready? Coquito. There's Coquito in the fridge. I know. I, I, almost, I want a, a Christmas batch. I should probably make a fresh batch, but yeah. I don't want to make like a batch a week. Okay. Well, you can save the batch for Christmas. It was pretty good. I mean, the first night you made it, I was out in the garage. I about slept in there. <laughs> I put <laughs> thing, a lot of rum. They had me. Uh, they had me. And you're not a rum drinker. Nah. I put a lot I'm not. Of rum in there. I'm not. And the thing had me. Comfortable. Yeah. And I had the heater going in there. Yeah. Because I was going to buy some. It's about to be a wrap. I, I had a moment where I was going to. No, like, no, everybody was advertising, you know, their annual Coquito. And, you know, I got my Coquito guy. So I was going to order from him. Do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had a moment where I was like, I can make it. Yes, you can. 
So I made it. Yes, you did. And it turned out pretty. I mean, I'm not Puerto Rican. No, it was. I mean, I, I don't have anything compared to. So it was. I mean, the, it was the best. The Coquito guy. You had some of his last year. I don't remember it. So oh. apparently it wasn't that good. Oh, OK. Well, it's you not said memorable. It was good. But I don't um, remember saying that. I was like, I can make this. I'm very capable of making my own Coquito. Yeah, it was, so I made it my was own legit. Coquito. I'm legit. not gonna get all crazy with like flavors and stuff, but like I just made a simple traditional coquito. You don't need to get. You don't need to and get. I was very satisfied with it. Yeah, with just regular, straight. Yeah, I had like drank a cup and I enjoyed it. it. In Sonoma's reach, I looked up. <laughs> and she was going right, right for it, um, so I had to snatch that real yes, quick. Yes, please tell the world how big of a negligent mother you are. Oh, I mean, almost had your one year old drinking coquito. What's not, wrong with you? She's not my first kid that's exposed themselves to some. Yeah, and that liquids. one was your fault too. None of the children have ever had any of my no, adult Sonoma beverages. Has, has picked up your can but it was of empty. Michelob. She got a drop of something. No, she didn't. There's I, always a drop of something. No, there's not. You're not gonna throw me under the bus. No, I ain't no. I was gonna drop. Salas took a whole swig <laughs> of your whatever it was. <laughs> she was like, "Is that why that tasted bad? Why were you going for more?" <sighs> We're not going to do this. We'll say she's if, if anybody, if we don't work out and you try to get custody, I can't have this used against oh me. I got, I got in a court receipts, of law. receipts on receipts. What's up? What do you want to talk about? You Don't do this. Don't like, do what? Like you don't know what we're going to talk about what tonight. What are going to talk about? Just, just go ahead. You don't lead have us, any context? Lead us in. You want to talk to your, talk about your boy, Jerry? Number one, I have, there are absolutely zero boys of mine are named Jerry. Boy Jerry, I wouldn't even. I don't know. I think Jerry is a dangerous name if you're is. if you're an old white man. It is because you probably have some racist tendencies. But no, I I have no no thoughts no on Jerry. Bad. Jerry John, I mean he's. Are you on the Stephen A? Are you on Team Stephen A? No, I, I don't know that I'm on anybody's side. I think. I think I don't know that there's. Anyone who, in a private setting, <laughs> wouldn't say. I mean, of course, like, who wouldn't be surprised that Jerry Jones was there? Uh, unfortunately, all we have is a photo, so it was not like we could could see him like in action. But it's it's not a it's not a leap for me to fathom that he was there as not only in the crowd but as a part of the crowd. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't. It doesn't change the way I view Jerry Jones because Jerry Jones has been very uh, explicitly himself. And if you pay attention and listen to the things that he said and the things that he's taken a stance on, he, you can see how he got from the 15, 13, however old he was in that picture to the 80 or 80 plus year old dude that he is now. So... I mean, I understand how it's how people would say it's not fair to judge, judge him a kid by their racism. Judge judge a kid <laughs> for something they may or may not have done. I mean, we've all done things as kids, but <clears throat> I never went to. <laughs> I mean, different times, you right? You know who I stand with? The person who was sifting through history books and knew what Jerry Jones looked like as a kid and was able to spot. Him in a picture. Because how long has that picture been in circulation? That person is a true hero. I should have taken time to figure out who that person was. Why are they here? Because that's just amazing craft work. Like, that's the type of... I don't know if, if men are aware of this, but, like, women are very much so, like, oh, I'm talking to this guy. I can't find him on Facebook. And it's, like, say less. And a woman will just give me his first name and be able to find him. That's, that's the craftiness that this person used to... Because the way someone looked when they're 15, 13, compared to how they look at 80 is very... I look exactly like Jerry Jones. What? It, it looks exactly like does him. I, maybe I've never... It I does, don't really yeah. look like, like look I, at him. I can look at that. I mean, I wouldn't have... If I just happened to be looking at a random yearbook... You wouldn't have just... I wouldn't have been, oh, it's Jerry Jones. But you tell but me it's Jerry Jones, and I'm like, amazing. oh, yeah, that's, that's Jerry Jones. went through that... Like, I don't know if they intentionally went through that effort or if it was by accident... But I just think that's amazing. I tell you what, 
4K cameras didn't exist back then, but they had his ass in 4K. They, did. they had the little red circle around. They, <laughs> there was no dispute. Like, and I appreciate that he didn't even try to be like that wasn't me. No, I'm that like, was Damn. him. And that was Jerry Jones. That, and that's what everybody is afraid of that their grandma is about to start being spotted. Grandma and aunties and great aunts. I mean, he's a he's eighty year old dude. Like, I I mean I'm I, not. It, it's, it's it's. I'm not gonna excuse it though. I mean, no, but, but I, just need, I just need that same detective work to be put to everything. You're going to find out that Betsy across the street is out there doing some stuff she shouldn't be doing. Any woman named Betsy absolutely has like an 80% chance of having been racist in her, <laughs> in her early life. At some point in her life. At some point. I have no, no problem believing that either. Okay. But while we're on the subject, how would you feel about what LeBron said? I thought his ang like he definitely baited. Like he was he he was baiting the media. I'm not mad at it. I do think that it's I don't want to say it's not it's relevant to him, but it's different sport. Mm -hmm. So I can see why they wouldn't bring it up, like why someone wouldn't ask him because this is football. And I honestly don't know, I would assume athletes, you know, inter sport in terms of like the fandom, but I don't, you know, you're so focused on him in his lane and his lane is basketball. So that's where you folk, you communicate with him on. So I don't necessarily see too much fault because I, and again, I don't listen to press conferences, so I don't know how much reporters question athletes outside of the realm of their sport. I mean, I've seen few interviews like when, um, the coach of what's the warriors back when, um, Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr, uh, it was like Steph's name kept popping in my head because I mix up their names. I probably have ADHD uh, or dyslexia, one of the two. Um, but, Go ahead. but there was one interview maybe last year, might have been the year before, where he essentially went off. Um, and I can't remember what the circumstance was because I talked about it on the it's pod. Probably about um, a shoot. Probably about uh, it, Uvalde. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was about the school shooting, and he was like, when we're sitting here talking about basketball, he was livid. Because um, his, his dad was was killed. In a shooting, yes, I'm aware of that, in the Middle yeah. East. Um, so I think that's really one of the few instances that I've seen someone in a press conference related to a sport bring up a topic on something else. So I think... The media is not necessarily, the reporters, interviewers, whatever, they're not necessarily wrong. I do think that LeBron was opportunistic and really put a spotlight on it. Like, he's not lying, though. Like, but I, again, I don't know. I th I think he, I think it was, it was a bait. I think he was baiting them and, and he took the opportunity and, you know, now we're talking about him and we're also talking about this Jerry Jones, but I don't think anyone really cares. I feel like this Jerry Jones things is, is so the, with everything that's in the, the news cycle, it fell flatter than I expected it to. Uh, and I, maybe it is Cause because no, it's cause nobody's surprised, but I don't know Jerry Jones. So I was like, I mean, Oh, I, he's going to have to like sell his team. He's going to like, and people are just kind of like, nah, he's, he's just going to carry on being this billionaire white guy who owns the Cowboys and keeps yeah. saying racist stuff or borderline racist stuff and get defended by Stephen A. Who's really giving me, um, football guy from Georgia vibes just with the effort of defense that he, he put out there. I just didn't think it was necessary. Because if you're not going to defend yourself, no. if you're not going to defend yourself, I just don't think it was Stephen A's place to also like go out of his way. But that's just my, that's my so opinion. Don't, 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 don't compare Stephen A to the football guy from Georgia. Herschel Walker. Don't do that. Who still, we haven't talked about the, uh, any of the elections, but the fact that his name is still in the news because mm -hmm. Georgia is in a runoff election mm -hmm. infuriates me. So by the time this, episode drops oh well no because that's tomorrow right it's tomorrow night <sighs> y'all i'm not we're not even gonna go there let's segue let's just what's next what else what, what do you what do you what do you want to say i just i am still very much so insulted 
on. You don't even live in Georgia. I'm not. <laughs> You're I not a I'm, resident. I'm taking, I am taking, um, what is it called when you, is it secondhand empathy? It's like, I, I just feel for Reverend Warnock because I can't imagine what it's like to be a qualified individual for a position and then have to go against someone unqualified and then essentially be tied well, he got more votes. It's just he didn't. He didn't get win 50%. Yeah. But still, like this, this is my competition. It's it's insult. It's like if you're dating someone and that person leaves you, and the person they leave you for is like less than, not equal to or greater than, but less than, and it's like this. How do you determine what's less than? Oh, you determine. You can determine what's less than. Can you? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. So can you. That's why you didn't even try. <laughs> I just don't feel like having that that back and forth. But I don't know that you can just automatically say, oh, this I person's less can, than. I think people can look at an ex and be like, mm. you definitely stepped down from me. Nah, I don't think so. I don't, okay. think that, I don't think that this. I don't have enough exes to really like have any foundation on this, I but I just believe it because I'll look at other people's exes and I'll be like, "Dang, that's where they went." But like, if somebody steps up, I'll be like, "Sis, he did that. I've done it before. Okay, he did that. Okay. <laughs> um." I feel like you don't have a flow. You're not flowing with me today. Uh, yeah, I'm just. You're just. You're I'm not here. Well, I don't have a triple of out liquor in my in my cup. That might actually be a quadruple. You're very heavy handed tonight with your pour. There's a little bit of water in there. Dash. And splash, I diluted splash the water. ice. You heard me stirring. I, I did. Hear, for, I did hear you stir was, for like 15 minutes. Yeah, I was starting the and dilution I thought process. The kids are gonna wake up. But. Okay, let's get to what we're really here to talk about. Let's do it. Go ahead. This is this is literally of of all the episodes that are where I say this is actually your podcast. This is Jessica Vibes featuring David. Okay. This is the one that this I will is the one? I will gladly sit this here is me? and watch you talk for okay. So I, I so we had originally thirty five more minutes. We had a ri- I think we were gonna do you had posted the back call. I had made a status. What day was it? What day did all this break? Was it Wednesday? I think it was yeah, last I don't, I don't even know. I it's, think it was it's last been like a Wednesday. Whirlwind of- it was last Wednesday morning. I get on my phone and I, I start seeing notifications from Twitter and just like People magazine, the Daily Mail the Daily Beast, like anything that does anything with gossip and celebrity was posting about this. So to the extent that you even came to me, I think I was still in bed (laughs) and you put your phone in my face to show me. No, I'm lying. Circle back. We're going to run this back. I was at my desk because it was, I think it broke in the middle of the day and you came over and you showed me your phone. I think you were downstairs when I told you. And that's when it broke. So, one of my I I am an ABC person. I will watch. I don't care what city state I am. I'm watching ABC. I'm not doing CBS. I'm not doing NBC. I'm doing ABC. That's like local news. Good Morning America. That's my jam. Like Google TV knows the view. The view. At the time, it was Wendy Williams, but, you know, she's unfortunately no longer with us on the TV. She's with us, just not on the TV. You can't be doing Um, that. Can't be doing that. Sorry. Um, Now it's Sherry Shepard. So ABC is my, like, morning. Like, I, if I don't have any channel, I just need, I need ABC. So I have grown a, I don't want to say fandom, but an appreciation for Good Morning America and the host. You know, George Stephanopoulos, Robin Roberts. And then during the pandemic, they canceled um, Michael, Kiki, and Sarah, their show, and they replaced it with GMA3, Good Morning America 3, which doesn't make sense because it airs in the afternoon, so it should really just be Good Afternoon America, but whatever. On the West Coast, I think it's still morning. Uh, But, I mean, East Coast. So it should just be, like, Good America. Whatever. Neither here nor there. So... 
been watching the show through the pandemic. I'm 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 a viewer. I participate in the viewing. I add to the ratings. And No you don't. <laughs> I'm a contributor. I am. You, you absolutely do not. So, you know, I get informed. It kept us informed about all the different stages of, of the pandemic. It's hosted by TJ Holmes and Amy Robach. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, they, they were killing it. They, they delivered the news with humor. Oh, he was delivering. <laughs> with humor. With he finesse. was delivering, all right. Um, I, I have an appreciation for TJ Holmes because it's like, the, he's a good looking black man on the, on a reputable news show. It's mm-hmm. not, you know, like one of those gossip shows. It's not, you know, inside edition. This is good I mean, morning. It's the news. So it's, but it's still, it's good it's morning. America. I mean, he does, I think he does 2020 features. Like he is, he's in it. Um, yes, he is. <laughs> still definitely in it. Are you done? Um, just go ahead. So I, I, I appreciate it. So I will say, about maybe a month or two ago, I personally thought like they have a really interesting chemistry because like they'll they'll bicker kind of tit for tat at each other. But I just figured, you know, your colleagues, you work with each other for a long time. You know, you just, you know, what know what bones to pick. But, you know, maybe I'm naive. I just never would have jumped to, you know, their, you know, knocking boots. So the news broke and initially I was like, oh my God, like this is, it was actually like, oh my gosh, I knew it. Like I I knew they had an interesting chemistry, but then it was like, dang, on the surface level, there really wasn't, like if you really think about it, there really wasn't much of a scandal. I think it just, everything broke in a, in a dull week. Like Kanye was doing his Kanye stuff. Dang, the rapper from Chicago was doing his stuff. You know, Trump was hosting dinners. And his name is Ye. No. Look, Donda did not name him that. So I'm gonna call him what Donda named him. Okay. Out of respect for her. Okay. Um, you know, the former president was hosting like anti everything dinners. Mm, your boy. Um no, I'm not claiming him. I've never claimed him for anything. It's your guy. No. You know the last time I claimed him was in Home Alone Two. And then I was just done with him. Um, so it was a very slow news cycle. And that's when it broke. So that day they came on air. Well, he came on air and she was just like gone. And he kind of just played it off. So it was like psych- like They were trending on Twitter. You get you ha- you you didn't even have to hashtag. You just type TJ and he popped up. Um, so I was I was going through the rabbit hole, seeing all the tweets and initially, day one, it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, it was a big deal, but it wasn't that big of a deal. So they popped on together on Thursday, kind of like did a little banter about how like they were ready for the weekend. But more and more details were coming out. So someone, we suspect his wife, hired a PI. And this PI is probably in business with the person who identified Jerry Jones in the book. 4K. Because the quality... 4K. The quality yeah. of the pictures, of the video was, I mean, this is CIA type stuff. Like, this is what, you know, Russian operatives are using to capture data. I was, I was, I was very impressed I, by I the quality too. of. I mean, know. you could see hand holding from the cab. I'm like, this person's probably like 300 feet away. That radius on that zoom, amazing. So now I'm like digging into this because I'm I, I I've got my sleuth hat on. I I need to know more. You know I'm I'm, I'm I, I need this to make more sense to me because now like I was invested. I'm a viewer. I'm I've built a relationship with them through the television. So True. now I just I need to understand how this relationship started. So you know, Amy's a runner, and apparently. TJ got interested. They ran the New York Marathon together. So they were training. And I wanted, I think where I was really most bothered was I wanted clarification of was it an affair? Because initially I thought it was an affair. And then I found out they were both separated from their spouses. So 
granted separation is still marriage i would be more lenient if the, if they were if everybody i would have more respect for the situation if everybody was genuinely separated when this relationship began right so you know mixed mixed sources some were saying it started in august and they were already separated from their spouses so then it led me down another rabbit hole. Like, did they separate from their spouses so they could be together? I was really just trying to find foundation to have respect for both of them. More so TJ, because he's black. Um, and I, I just try to avoid the demise of a black man um, in the public eye. Unless they set them up, themselves up for failure. And then it's just like, hey, I can't save you. Um, so, you know, mixed I'm still on the grounds that their relationship started, you know, mid to late summer around August, August time. So, you know, they're both living separate from their partners. They've got this relationship going. So it's like, OK, um, I personally didn't think that ABC needed to fire them. Uh, I thought I thought they should have just hit the nail on the head and just addressed it. Um, but they didn't. So I'm glad we didn't record last week because a lot has broken over the weekend that just makes this so much messier. Okay. So, turns out... That was a very deliberate swing you just made to, to open up to me. So, turns out, none of these people are single of offenders. This is not a single offense. They're both habitual cheaters. Amy was married, had an affair with her current husband who used to be on Mel Melrose Place, mm -hmm. and then left her husband. Yeah, you've had a very lackluster career if your biggest work is- still is, re is, being referenced to is, Melrose Place. Yeah, Melrose Place. And they had a comeback, and I don't was, think- I don't was think a minute, was, That was a minute ago. That was. My mom used to watch Melrose yeah. Place. Yeah, it was a that minute. Was, that was way back with like the Tory Spelling. What yeah. was that show she was on? Um, Beverly Hills. Yeah. 90210. Only reason why I know the zip code. So- she had an affair on her first husband, married with her second husband, married him, and I guess now had an affair with TJ. TJ, because I thought this was his first affair. Again, no. So TJ had a three-year-long affair with a producer on GMA. That producer was close friends with Amy. Amy. Amy was also good friends with TJ's wife. So that also had a rift because TJ's wife was like, you know that my husband has had an affair with this woman and you're still good friends with her. Ha. But the plot thickens because she's Mr. S Miss Still Your Man. So wife is distracted by that relationship. So there are so many like people just breaking this down. And I don't really know who to side with until a tell-all book comes out. But... People are saying, suggesting that TJ's wife was so distracted by Miss Singh, who was the producer on GMA, um, and that relationship that she got, she didn't realize that Amy was swooping in behind her. Mm. Add, you know, insult to injury, Amy's kid babysits TJ and his wife's kid. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just a tangled, it's just a tangled web of of a weaved web that is is constantly tangling so this morning it breaks that gma um what is her name the ceo president of mm -hmm. abc has pulled them so i don't know if it necessarily means that they're just completely gone off the show if it's just temporary because um gio benitez and stephanie ramos were hosting today and they were like tj and amy have the day off and i know all of america was like the day off okay so um amy moved out of her apartment with her husband her 5.2 million dollar apartment with her husband this weekend um yo you can get a 5.2 million dollar apartment with a gma salary or Mel Melrose Place salary, like somebody's salary. Melrose uh, royalties. Somebody's salary is paying for that five point two million. But I was, I was, I mean, she's got two Good Morning America shows. You think she gets two salaries? Or no, I'm just saying, like, she's making yeah. enough. She does the morning show sometimes. Sometimes I used to sympathize because I'd see her at seven a.m. and then I'd see her again at one in the afternoon. And I'm like, you've been up since like four. It's just normal day. It's just 
different time window. It just seemed like a lot of hours. I was concerned about, you know, her work-life balance because her work-life balance was just fine. Um, so it's just, it's interesting. And honestly, I I don't necessarily think they should get fired, but I think you, I heard that they broke a morality clause. Like the, in from an HR uh, perspective, yeah. There it is. From an HR perspective, they didn't do anything wrong. There's that morals they're, they're clause. They're equals. They're not, you know, he's not, senior to her she's not senior to him they're they're on the same level but i think it's the fact that they didn't disclose but rumor has it people knew um it's even been said that robin roberts pulled him aside and was like stop it um so it's not like this is that they kept oh, she, it i'm just trying to like she's somebody mama or something i mean it's like, robin roberts I'm grown, I'm grown man. Robin you Roberts told me to stop nah. doing something i'd stop doing it number one i got my contract and robin ain't handing those out number two I grown feel like robin has pull Grown ass man, you ain't about to tell me I what I can like or cannot do. Robin said no to something or to someone. Clearly not, they because did. they kept going. They did. So she ain't got the, she ain't got the pull. You think she? That's has. neither here nor there. The point I'm trying to make is Robin Roberts was like, "Stop it." So it wasn't private. This this and obviously it wasn't private. And obviously, so so this is where this is where my thought comes to because obviously they didn't care because they were in a pub giggling and sniggling they were in you know the cab. it's not like they were <laughs> they were in the cab and then they went to the cabin um they did go to the cabin they did go to the cab and, and left a review what? she left a review about the cabin was it a good review yes it was okay. um but i guess where i i am and okay maybe so we've, we've arrived at that point we've of arrived of, here. Oh, okay um it's just one question and I guess it would be is it worth it because I'm sure in a moment it it you know you're not thinking about all of the the dominoes all of the repercussions from this decision you know you're you're blissful you're you're in that joyful moment of like this is something fresh this is something new so you're not thinking about consequences i would hope they maybe had that conversation but for the most part since they didn't disclose it to you know producers or executives they weren't think they were thinking selfishly for themselves and not how this would topple down so now that you know they're potentially you know their jobs are on the line is it worth it like I doubt they're going to get married. You know, it, 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 it comes off as just, I don't want to say a fling, but just, you know, we're two people who are separated, who are habitual cheaters and, you know, we're attracted to each other. The longevity doesn't seem there. I'm not in the relationship. I can't speak to it, but now seeing all of this, like as an outsider, as a spectator, I have to wonder, like, Oh my gosh, you're like your whole career could be done because of this decision. Like all the women in the world you could have an affair with, you pick your co-host. All the men in the world you could have, like, you know, you could have gone and found somebody who was from, you know, Beverly Hills 90210, like since you like 90 stars and, you know, start a relationship with them. But like you picked your co-host, you knew you had a morality clause. So it's not like they sprung it up on you like, oh, you're an affair. Well, hey, we're going to slip this morality clause in. All of this was knowledgeable to you. You've had this show and your husband came on and sat next to you across from this guy. That was wild. That was. That was wild. I got to admit. your own fault. I got to admit. That was that was tough. And he complimented them. Yeah. And now you got video surfacing of TJ when he was like interviewing to be on Entertainment Tonight, talking about you know, mar- everybody should you know experience marriage and blah blah blah. So I'm. That's- no, I mean that's. I mean, he experienced it. <laughs> you can still vouch for it, even if it's the particular marriage you're in isn't for you anymore. I'm I don't know. Saying. I'm just hurt. It hurt me. Nah, I think. Um, it's crazy. I, I think I'm still fascinated that this is actually like a thing mm-hmm. because I don't take well, Good Morning America is, is a big deal. Uh, I thought maybe not as much as it used to be, but I never took, I mean, it's not even like anchors involved with the first hour. Like it's not Robin Roberts. Like if Robin Roberts, You're George not, Stephen not, not Jeff, because I don't, you know, I know Robin is <laughs> doesn't swing that way, but um, you know, like if, if Michael and like a producer, 
and Michael Strahan and a producer mm. have been found out. That would be big news because it's like Michael Strahan, you know, it was a big deal when he left Kelly and, and yeah. Michael. And, you know, he's, Michael Strahan's, I'd say, like a big deal. Where's he been? I feel like he's been quiet through all of this. I, <laughs> he <kept> staying <laughs> out of Dodge. <laughs> what you mean? Um, but yeah, I was just like, I I was interested in it because I know that's your show mm-hmm. from one of your shows. And so when I handed it to you, you were like, oh. so that was, that was enough for me. Like your reaction that I want, I finally broke some news with one of your shows to you. I was, that hurt. It was a lot. But then I realized just like, kept snowballing people kept talking about it and tweeting and then like you said the the cheating conspiracy it just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper and even now i'm i'm just i'm shocked that it's as big a deal as it is maybe it's because like you said there hadn't been a whole lot going on in terms of headlines but and it's the messy juicy gossip stuff that that people feed off of but i also think good morning america is clean Honestly, morning shows are... When do you think the morning show is based off? I know. Is it Good Morning America or the Today Show that's based off of? Well, now both. True. But I feel like morning shows yeah, you're are right. not... I think, I think they did draw Today inspiration show, right? from Matt Lauer's situation. Yeah. yeah. I feel like morning shows are supposed to be... Or taken at... I mean, these are the people who are giving you the day's news. Maybe we with people. What have people done from since the beginning of time? messed around and found out exactly <laughs> like now whether it comes out or not is, is one thing mm-hmm. but it was just dealing with people but i think that's another thing that bothered me because it's like y'all were reckless i want to know somebody leaked yeah i want to know who did it because they they have a source who like knows everything yeah talking about a source close to them a source close like who is this source yeah, are they getting paid sources. I want to be a source source close to something. You got to be. Not in it. I just want to be the source close to it. Dropping, dropping links. Sending pictures. You got to be careful. Got to get you a, uh, what are they calling a a VPN? (laughs) When you send the stuff over the web. But no, I like that really. And I will say just as, you know, from black woman bias, I was also hurt by that too. But because I had an appreciation for TJ. Mm. And I remember one time I even told you, I said, I went to his Instagram because I was like, he's probably the type of black man to be married to a white lady. And his wife was black. And I was so happy about that. She was. Yeah. His wife was black. He ain't got no wife no more. I mean, they're still separated. (laughs) I was so happy about that. And, and again, and people might try and be, oh, that's race, blah, blah, blah. No, as a black woman, there are some type of there there is a percentage a demographic of black men who are you're not surprised when their partner is white oh, and, yeah. and he is that, vi- is, huh? that, is that so yeah hmm. and he visibly looks like that type what's the type 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 black man married to someone who's I mean, not what, black. It was, how do you how do you construct that type how is that that michael type? ely type but just on the news. Mm. So, so a light, any light skinned dude <laughs> is the type to marry light, skin, light eyes. Like, you know, they, uh-huh. can, they, they finesse their way through all the races. So, he so just, I'm going to do you a really big favor. and I'm just going to cut that part. <laughs> I don't want anybody to come you, up with me. You could leave it. People could, but no. he does, he does have that, you know, that look about him. So when I saw that his wife, I think she's mixed, mixed race, but you know, she presents black. So, I was very much so like, yes, you know, here's another point for us, you know, yes, su- successful black man with a beautiful black wife. And I mean, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What do you gain? Let's, let's, let's assume it's true. Like this affair didn't happen and it's a black dude mm-hmm. happily married to a black woman. What do you, what, what does that do for you? Cause you're the same person, mind you. Who's always like, I don't do idolatry. I don't get people who fawn over these Hollywood celebrities no. and blah, blah, blah. But what, but that's, there's really not, it's not that big of a gap between that and being wanna, all into somebody's marriage just because it's a black dude married, a successful but, black man married to a successful black woman. I would say because statistically, a lot of successful black men feel they have arrived 
when their partner is white. How do you know that? Statistics. Based on what statistics? All of the black men whose wives, <laughs> that's not, whose wives are. You got a poll. You got a survey. You got yeah. a poll. You got a. There's there there are. And that still doesn't answer my question. What does so it do I for gave, you? As what a do black you gain woman, from it? Because because you are married to a black man. So why are you I worried am. about what somebody else's because marriage looks like? Just with all of the, and this is not the direction I expect the conversation yeah, to go. But just with all bit. of the constant attacks or frequent attacks that a lot of black men give towards, you know, black women. Um, Mm. Go ahead. It's, it's a relief to see that when a majority of successful black men typically marry out of their race, that one has chosen to marry in his race. I don't know. I think you have to be a black woman to understand it. It doesn't, I wouldn't, I mean, I'd make a snarky remark if his wife had been white. I'd have been like, oh, I told you. But it's just it's just nice to see. Because you have, you know, you have the rapper from Chicago, for example, who was with Amber Rose for years, but made it seem as if Kim Kardashian was the end-all, be-all of women. Um, so it, it can be... Wouldn't you want your... Wouldn't if a man... Wouldn't you... Don't you want your man to make you feel like you yeah, handle the young woman. The, 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 it's just different because it's a Kardashian. The, no, it's the foundation of which he did it. Again, I personally, I, I support interracial relationships, interracial marriage. I don't care. It's more so if you have to beat down one to uplift another, and a lot of. And again, you're not a black woman, so you're like our our internet feeds are very different. So I see exposures to this. So I even recently on Instagram there was this Asian woman and she had posted a video. She's either Chinese or Vietnamese adopted into a white family. And she was saying, she was like, I don't have a like I don't have a dog in the fight, but she said plainly, she's dated so many different races. But it's only black men who will blatantly say they don't date black women because of whatever reason. And they wanted to date her. They wanted to be with her because she was exotic. And she was like, y'all, I'm white bread. I was raised by white people. I just look, I'm just Asian on the outside. But on the inside, I'm, you know, from the Midwest. So that's that's the significance of it. There are plenty of people who date outside of their race for whatever reason, but black women are frequently bashed. You know, when a Latina is feisty, like, oh, she's spicy, she's this, whatever, it's praise. Spicy. Sp- I don't know, I don't know, I'm, I, don't, I don't know, I don't, I'm not dating a Latina. But, that's racist. You know, she's but spicy, that's, a Latina is spicy. But that's what they say, <laughs> but like a, a, a black- I would, No, time out, 30 seconds, flag on the play. We gonna take this back fifteen yards. I ain't never in my life heard a brother say he likes a Latina because they spicy. Because <laughs> they're spicy. So I'm calling one hundred percent cap on that. Spicy, no, but feisty or you know, <laughs> like She's spicy. Oh, I can't stand you. Oh but my you know gosh. what I mean. You try to you try to discredit me, but you know I'm reacting what, to what you said. You know what I mean. You said spicy. You know what I mean. Attributes that all women have, they are separated by race and they are demonized within black women. I don't know if I ever told you there was this one guy I was in love with in high school. I want his name, I want his address. And I, know where this is going. I remember we were having a conversation about like us potentially being a couple. And he was like, oh, I don't have enough muscle to be with a black woman. Oh, yeah. You, you told the yeah, story here. I did tell it. So it's that same connotation. But if, I mean, it's fine. Go ahead. I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, you need to have muscle to be with me. I do have muscle. And your child's awake. Which one? One of them. Who's out there? Savi. Sovereign. Or is it Solace? Who is it? Girl, this is not, this is not okay. Go sit with your dad. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> Hi, Savi. Welcome to another episode of Rush Vibes. Um, so that's where that stems from. Like she, she flat out said, like she's dated all races, and it's only black men. And she's troubled by that so, because it's black women who raise them. It's black women would, who are their sisters. So I would like, I would like, I would like to respond. If you say anything about spicy, one more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so two problems with this this framing of your argument. One. I, it doesn't matter to me that this Asian woman who's on Instagram has some sort of following or has, whose post has gone viral, semi-viral or whatever. Because again, it's one person's experience and you're not going to sit here and tell me that there isn't a white dude out there who hasn't explicitly told someone that he doesn't date black women because that's not his preference or because he's racist or whatever. No, I'm not saying, but it's, so, not, but it doesn't, it's not on a public forum. It's not in public places. <laughs> You don't know that because you're not in every you're not in white spaces. You know, I'm just saying I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know why we live in the world that we live in, in the country that we live in. And it's history as it pertains to racism and stereotypes. Yeah, we choose to focus on really in these. No, I'm talking about in, in, in these types of conversations when it comes to genders, we choose to focus on some black men stating their preference. But yet we use that as if it's all black men and, and their and their thoughts and opinions. I just I just it, it's, it's mind boggling to me. It really is. And I and I do see stuff online. I do see stuff on Twitter where it's constantly. Like gender, what I don't understand any of it. Number one, and this is why I'm so thankful that I found my true love, who is a black woman, and I don't have to really engage. I just, I just consume. Um, but I don't know. I just think it's I think it's an unfair thing to do. Um, I think everybody. I, I, I think everybody. So has, I, no, I'm not done. Yet. I think everybody has their preference. No, I had to take a two minute break because I had to go get your child. No, I'm saying to make in this point. I just don't think it's it's fair. I am not disputing people having their preferences, but you can have your preferences and not insult or put down another. I have been around white men who say they specifically prefer black women. And when they say that, they've never said why they don't prefer white women. They've just simply said, my preference is black women. And sometimes it gets a little creepy and they get all fetishy, but whatever. But there's never the follow-up insult to their own kind. Everyone is entitled to their preference. Even within the black community, you have black women who prefer darker-skinned black men, who prefer lighter-skinned white black men. It, it, preference is human nature. I'm not disputing preference. It's just typically when black men state their preference, instead of simply saying, I prefer to date outside of my race or I prefer white women. I prefer Latinas. I prefer Asians, whatever it may be. It always comes with because, or it typically comes with because black women are loud. Black women are rowdy. Black women are this. You can shake your head all you want. You're not a black woman. You haven't been insulted to your face that someone doesn't like you, whether you were pursuing them or not because of unnecessary stereotypes so it's it's great that you want to see equality and you don't think that it's necessary to identify both parts now i i know that there are plenty of black women who will say they don't date black men for whatever reason they choose but the percentage of that is typically lower than the percentage of black men who will blatantly put down a black woman as they lift up women of other races. And that's why when I saw that his wife was black, I appreciated it because a lot of black men who get to a certain level of professionalism of wealth feel that the way to solidify that is to marry a woman who's out of their race. I'm not saying all you have men like Denzel Washington, Samuel Jackson, Barack Obama. These are significant black men who have black wives, Will Smith. So I'm not saying all of them. 
I'm not blanketing that statement. But, but you I can't am even... saying that a majority, a lot of them based do on what? that. Based off of who they're married to. No, I'm not talking about based on who they're married to, but based on, you're saying that the reason why they do that is because it's it's a way for them to lock in their wealth or your previous previous statement that black men seem to be the only only race of men who say they don't date black women and it's majority of the time and follow followed followed by insult. with an insult i i just that's an unfair thing to say because you okay st- st- All st- right. st- statistically speaking you don't know all black men. It's just, it's just a, like you have to. Like, That's why you I'm have not to saying be, all black men. I'm saying a majority. You can't, you can't say a majority. You don't know a majority of black men either. You have to, you have to be careful when you say things like that. You have to frame it from your experience. Which that's I, what. That's one thing. No, but you're just saying majority. I'm pulling my experience and all of the mil- experiences of all the millions of women who are on social media. We ain't you, ain't even, the same you, ain't, you ain't even come across a million people on social media, I let alone a million have. black women. So stop I'm just it. saying. But you still. So. Seeing all that. Seeing a, a I, I still don't understand what a seeing a, a black successful black married couple. What uh, you about to go on the floor. What that does for you, because you have your own marriage Mm -hmm. right um which subjectively speaking is successful in its own right Mm -hmm. right so i don't know i'm just curious it it strikes me as curious because i'm not i'm not going to sit here and say i don't like gain inspiration from um actors and athletes and things like that because we all know i do but i just thought it was interesting for you to say because i know how you feel about you know, idolatry and blah 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 blah. I'm it's, in it's, no it's, way idolizing them. No, no, no. Them. But it it it's, it smacks of idolatry because the passion and the disappointment that you felt when you have, other than watching dude for a couple hours at most on TV every morning, you don't really have any connection to him. So why would his decisions disappoint you when one you don't know him, two? Okay, you see this? This is a microphone. You can't hit it with your head, otherwise it makes a really loud noise. Okay? So I need you to sit still. Can you do that for me? Can you sit still? You can? You promise? Pinky promise? That's not your pinky. This is your pinky. Okay? You hit my microphone again, you gotta go sit with your mom. Hmm? You want to sit with mommy? You don't want to sit with me? It's because I told you not to hit my mic. Come on. That's why your pants are crooked. And they're too big. Don't be looking at yourself on camera. You look cute. Anyways, um, no, I was just I was curious. Interesting. I just appreciated that his wife was black. As a black woman, I appreciated that he was married to a black woman. It was just me supporting a fellow sister. But. Can I ask you a question? How do we know? I never said you could. Oh, you paused. I took an opportunity. What is the Hamilton? I saw something and I, and I took it. I can't remember it. How do we know? And this is just me positing or me questioning. How do we know that his wife isn't partially responsible for the situation in which they found themselves? How do we know that she's a good? How do we know that she's not maybe potentially toxic herself or that she didn't contribute to TJ indulging in the things that he indulged in. How do we know? Do we know? So that was going to be my next thing. Okay, cool. Well, great segue. Because you, I do not condone cheating within a marriage by any means. Um, But I will never dispute that to cheat, it takes three people. Okay. Um, I think 
I am a firm believer that, you know, marriage, I understand being in a marriage myself. Marriages hit ruts, they hit difficult times. You know, you have moments where you're just like questioning a lot. Michelle Obama just dropped like an Instagram post she or something did. about it. And she got a lot of heat for it too. For being honest. <laughs> she, she, well, probably we, from a lot of people who haven't been to marriage. But we can circle back as to why she got heat for it. Um, so it kind of circles back to the my initial issue with just like saying I want to be in next week, where you know you have to. We get into moments in our marriage where I know it's going to pass. But even while you're in it and you know it's going to pass, you still have to persevere and push through to get to the point of passing. And if you choose not to, as you're going up this steep hill to stop, that's when you've lost. I don't know her personally. I don't know him personally. I don't know the fundamentals of their marriage. I can assume that being married to an immigration attorney could probably be trying. I can assume that being married to an anchor on a morning show who has to travel not only the country but the world, who has to be up probably around 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and be out until maybe 5, 6 o'clock can be, can be testing. You have to pay me millions to yeah, have that work schedule. I, I, I can assume those being fun fundamental parts of your marriage can be very trying and if anybody stops putting in effort it leaves room for a door to open that's why when people say like oh i'd never cheat i'd never like i don't think anyone ever gets into a marriage and is like i'm probably gonna cheat um i think it's one of those, it's like a weed in a garden. You know, you, you're, you're tending your garden, you're watering it, you're, you're, you're clipping the weeds, and, you know, you go on vacation. You come back, you're tired, you're sick, so you don't get to go into your garden. And then slowly, weeds start to creep into it. That, I feel like that's a good analogy for it. That's kind of how marriage is. It takes, you know... Uh, I don't I don't feel like, you know, having this conversation. I don't feel like, you know, checking in on my partner. And then slowly and slowly and slowly you leave room for someone to, who, you know, is close to your partner to have a conversation. How are you doing? What are you doing? Let's get drinks, blah, blah, blah. You know, especially in the work setting, that's a very intimate environment because you're spending most of your time with people who are not your partner. So I, I I won't say she she could be toxic. She could not. He could be toxic. He could not. Like, this is his second affair. So I don't think he... All of our kids are doing the most. Which one do you want? No, what that? That's Sonoma. What did you Um... I'll go take some. Do you want to stop recording or do you want to? You can bring it down? No. Oh, yeah, right. She's going to be all over this place. I mean, do you, is that it or do you want to? I mean, we can continue. Let's pause and put her back to sleep. Okay. Okay. So, people are asleep. For now, um, both children woke up. I don't recall where we left off. Something about you trying to defend all black men, which is... No, I'm not. I'm trying to say how unfair it is to use blanket statements. I said when... most. most i didn't say all i could have said all and you'd be just as wrong as if you said most because you don't know most ain't no poll you don't know research nothing i know life experience the anecdotal experience anyway um 
I appreciated that his wife was black. I um, appreciate all black wives. Black wives matter. Black wives are amazing. Um, But I also, to a point that we were touching on, I don't know the parameters of their marriage and I don't know who fell short, who didn't fall short. I do believe... We all fall short of the glory. We do. I do believe that some people are not meant to be married. I think some people want to be married. I think some people see marriages and desire the beauty of it. But I genuinely... And the reason why I say this, because it's coincidental, I was out with a friend... And we were having lunch and she frequently asked me how, like about my marriage and how am I married to the same person? And in full transparency, <laughs> like how, how <laughs> I can't even say it cause I don't speak like that. Um, but essentially like, how do you have sex with the same person? Like over and over and over again. Um, and it's always hard for me to answer that because I live it and it's just kind of like, like that's my life. Like I, and not in a burdensome way, but just like I'm married and the same person I've been sleeping. It's funny cause I hear her saying it in my head, which is nowhere close to how I'm saying it on the pod. Um, but as much as she will frequently say like she wants something like that, she also knows that she doesn't like she she'll joke about how she wants like a Tuesday to Thursday husband, but not like Monday to Sunday. And I and I at first I was just like, no, no, but I don't think I think it's a misconception that we've taught ourselves that everyone should grow up and get married and be happily ever after. I don't think everyone is cut out for marriage. I do think people see marriage and see the beauty of marriage and want that and want to create it for themselves. And sometimes when they do create it, because a lot of people ask, I see whenever like cheating comes up, well, why didn't you just leave? I think when people are in relationships, they do desire them to be successful but i think when they just define successful it's more so we're just together not we're faithfully together Uh, and i think that's a key word so i don't think tj or amy are are meant to be married i think they desire partnership i think they desire companionship but the actual act of being in a committed faithful marriage i don't think either of them are built for it unless both of them just haven't found the right. and i don't know if that i necessarily believe that you have to find the right person that you'll be faithful um and good to because i think some people are married to good people and they're still like it's just ingrained in them um and certain things can't be broken we all have our vices and unfortunately some people's vices might simply be that they just can't be faithful um they have a wandering eye so that's something that i did take from this as well that i don't think everybody the institution of marriage is not for everyone and everyone can't find at least how i view success in marriage for whatever reason whether it be an individual vice, a vice together, I just don't think everyone truly understands the effort that goes into being married and the sacrifice that goes into marriage. Because along with sacrificing self, you're sacrificing access to three billion people. So that's something that I was I was toiling with too, that you know people are going to come after his character, come after her character. And right, I would say kind of rightfully so, um, because you always have the option to to leave. But I think you you never true, as the older I get, I don't want to say the more I can justify people doing wrong and immoral things, but certain things I can find room to give grace for 
And it's easy to say if I'm not the partner of someone who's just been cheated on, but um, if you just take the time to recognize that not you don't know what everyone grew up exposed to. You don't know how everyone is built. You don't know everyone's vices. Yeah, I, I would just think that, you know, some people like the idea of marriage, but don't actually have it in them to execute the work. Agreed. See, we agree on some. Do we? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why I just said agreed. Okay. Okay. Agreed. That's all you got to say is agreed. Yeah. I, I, um, I mean, there's not much to say. I don't know. It's just add on for the sake of adding on. Okay. Is that where you want to leave it? Probably. It's probably best. The kids do my, do my rhythm more. Threw off my vibe. Mm. But um, hopefully, by the time this releases, there won't have been any more turns I hope not. in the, the Good Morning America drama. Hopefully, there, there the, your, your boy doesn't win the other Senate seat in Georgia. And hopefully Kyrie doesn't do anything. <laughs> He's been pretty quiet, although you know, just announced today that he and Nike separated. So, Question for you. What did Chris Paul do? Did Chris Paul have an affair with Kim Kardashian? Because as I was searching all of these tweets about TJ Holmes, Chris Paul was in like 20% of them. Everyone, so many people were like, between TJ Holmes and Chris, Chris Paul. And I was like, what did the State Farm guy do? So, you know, Kanye got suspended from Twitter again, right? Yes. But that I heard so it was only because he came for Elon. So before, one of his, like, last tweets, mm-hmm. he was just like, <laughs> he was like, oh, yeah. Like. I caught. I caught this dude with Kim. <laughs> this is a picture of Chris Paul, but it's so weird because it's like, you know, like in all the crime movies. And crime TV shows, they have like the board of like all, the, the, like that's exactly what it looked like. I'm like, why do you have a random billboard? Not billboard. Why do you have a random board with Chris Paul's face on it? Like, I'm just trying to figure out. Like, this was Kanye. This was Kanye. This was Yay. He it, posted the picture. Name. I'm just like, it's such a random. <laughs> it was just a random photo. Chris Paul to have, but yeah, Chris Paul caught astray. I mean, TMZ, somebody in his camp obviously refuted the report, the, the allegation. So he did not have an affair with Kim Kardashian? Not according to his camp, no. But according to... But Kanye seems <laughs> to think that... <laughs> I heard that he, I read that he said he caught them. That's what, he, that's what his tweet said. He said, I caught this guy with Kim. But... Caught is very is what, subjective. It's very general. Like caught them doing what? You caught them talking. You caught them taking a walk. You caught them out together. You caught them so buying this boots. This is why Chris Paul and TJ Holmes were trending in the same week. It was so wild, and I missed. I missed it because I was asleep. Like all this stuff happened. Like I want to say I broke late. Whatever night it was. Was today Monday? Maybe Saturday night. I think it all happened and I just woke up and saw Twitter and it was just like, I said, I can't believe, I mean, the tweets are still there, but it's just such an experience to be on Twitter as something is breaking and people are just tweeting about it. It's, 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 I almost, it's almost akin to like watching sports live. Like it's very hard to go back and watch a recorded game or whatever. And of course all Twitter is, is just, you know, Old tweet, not old tweets, you know, mm-hmm. tweets that have happened at various times. But um, yeah, being there, just when something becomes a trending topic, it's it's, it's an unrivaled feeling. But yeah, 
It's crazy, but it's Kanye. So it's like, is it true? Is it not? Is it somewhere in between? Like, it's, it's wild, but did not expect <laughs> Chris Paul. Has he said anything? No, nah, I mean, I don't expect him to. So he's just minding his own business. Chris Paul was he's filming probably, another. He was probably asleep like I was. Another, another, what? State Farm commercial with Alfonso and then yeah. just gets caught in a stray. And that was crazy. Okay. But that was funny. But yeah, that, that was a thing that happened. Okay. Because I was very much so. Like, where did this come from and why are they. Because you wouldn't expect Chris Paul and Kanye to be. I mean, you wouldn't. No. But then I was also like, did TJ Holmes and Chris Paul have an affair with the same woman? Like, I didn't know where this was going because I had to dig to finally find out why he was trending. It was wild. But they were they were saying that it was an attack on black men. <laughs> there was somebody else and there were you know, between Kanye, Chris Paul and TJ Holmes. They were saying it was just an attack on black men. And the media was coming for black men. Well, and I was like, no, oh. Chris, uh, Kanye was coming for Chris Paul. <laughs> The TJ Kanye, uh, I feel like people do things to themselves and then mm-hmm. want to be like, we're being attacked. Like, no, you just you definitely set yourself you just up. Got That's caught. Been another thing that I've been grappling with. Like, a lot of people are just very much so putting themselves in situations where people will give their opinion because they put themselves out there to have opinions given, and then be upset when people give opinions. Yeah. And at least in my opinion, you control what you put out there. And if the response you get isn't favorable to what you expect, that's kind of on you because as much as social media is free, everybody does control what they put out. So, you know, if you don't want people to know about certain aspects of your life. You don't put it out there. So I don't know. It's a mess. It's a hot mess before Christmas. Like I'm just waiting for Jesus to be born. Like sweet baby Jesus in the womb is kicking. Cause this, this is a lot. It's a lot and it's nothing at the same time. Like surface level, when you really think about it, Dude had an affair with his coworker. Like that is everybody, not everybody, but that is probably a high percentage of how most affairs take place. Someone builds a connection with their coworker. Really not that big of a story, but the society we live in, we just don't have, or we're always looking for something else to jump on. And this just happens to be it. So Facts. We gonna see where we go. You know where I'm going. To bed. To edit this podcast. Go wrap. Go and wrap this thing up. Take us out. I, that's not my job. I can't take, bring you us took, in you and took us, take you us, took us out. out last last time. Go take because us out. you couldn't find words. <laughs> I can't find words, and I need to go ahead. Stumbling over yourself. Go ahead. <sighs> okay, since this is now my task. Thank you for your audience. Thank you for taking the time to join us on this vibe. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. Share with a friend. Maybe two. Put it on your Facebook. Um, Make sure to listen to us on Spotify. Tune in. Apple Podcast. And wherever else you can listen to podcasts um check us out at www.rushvibes.com and uh, merch will eventually be coming soon again no enjoy your week and don't forget to continue to rush the vibe yeah hey hey i don't care way too fucking stop me now i don't care way too fucking stop me now I done came way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I done.